Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I love telling people about Jesus, and today we have a very special guest with us, Miss Tamron Clintworth from In His Name Ministries, and she is very unique as an evangelist because she is female and a powerful woman of God preaching the gospel. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you, Daniel. Very excited to be chatting with you for these few minutes. Look forward to seeing what the Holy Spirit unpacks. <laughs> so tell me, how did you become an evangelist? Daniel, you know, the, the, the Lord likes surprising one. Um, you know, he knows why he formed each and every one of us. Um, I did not have crusade evangelism on my radar at all. And when I was growing up, I grew up in a wonderful Christian home, received the Lord as Savior at the age of five, and loved the Lord all my life, pulled the Spirit and as a young girl, and fell in love with Jesus as a teenager, desperately in love with Him. If I was a pull to ministry, I always assumed that would be to be this, because in my books I'd never been an unbeliever. I'd only ever known Jesus. I'd never known the darkness. I'd only ever known the light. And all the evangelists who I knew were men who had some checkered past, um, some scary history, some testimony. And in my mind, I had no testimony. I had no story to share with the lost. And how would they come to Jesus if I didn't have a story to share? And so I remained sensitive to the Lord's voice and wanted to know from Him what He wanted me to do with my life, received no specific direction. So I went to university and was in the third year of a four-year law degree in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I had the wonderful privilege of going on a crusade of evangelist Rano Bonka in Nigeria, in Abuja. And that is where the Lord spoke to me. And looking out at a crowd of 500,000 people, the Lord spoke to me and said, Tamron, this is what I've called you to do. This is what you will do for the rest of your life. I was utterly shell-shocked because until that day, and I say this shamefully, but until that day, I had not won one soul for Christ. I didn't even know how to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism, let alone crusade, mass evangelism. I returned home, had a, a very honest conversation with my dear father, who I love very much. We agreed I would finish the law degree, and then I could launch out this blessing. And while I studied, I learned how to evangelize. I would go between law classes to the schools, the local schools, teach the kids about Jesus. I would go to the, the gas stations, speak to the gas attendants. There in South Africa, we have people who fill up our cars with gas. We're very spoiled. I would witness to them, minister to them, learn how to share the gospel, how to break it down into bite-sized pieces. And we would preach to whoever I could find to preach to and just started finding my feet. Held my own little crusade on a local university campus, um, which was very exciting. Um, I was absolutely thrilled. A tiny crowd, I mean, gosh, if there were 50 people there, it would have been a lot. But in my mind, I was finally having my first crusade, and I was just bursting with joy. I finished the degree, and that last test paper, I put down my pen, and I have never looked back at the law again. Evangelist Rana Bonka often used to say to me, Tamron, you're no longer preaching the law, you're preaching grace. <laughs> and I will preach grace until the Lord takes me home. Um, bought my own tent, started tent evangelism, a thousand seated tent. Um, and I went from location to location having tent crusades. Didn't know what I was doing, didn't know how to plan crusades, but I was doing my best. The Lord saw my heart, he took pity on me, I think. And I got a phone call from the Southern African Director of Christ for All Nations, who I kept in touch with after attending the crusade of Evangelist Rana Bonka. Um, and the Lord must have put it on her heart. She phoned me and said, Tamron, come, come work with us. Learn, learn how to run a crusade evangelistic ministry. I prayed about it, grabbed the opportunity, worked with Christ for All Nations for a year. That's where I met my wonderful husband. Um, and then after that, I launched out into NSA Ministries having gospel crusades. We went from community hall to community hall to start off with, then started having open air meetings, a few hundred people, then a few thousand people gathering. Now we see tens of thousands gathering, and we look forward to seeing hundreds of thousands and then millions. And we just want to go bigger and bigger, not because of our egos, but because the more people who are in a crusade service, the more people will get saved following a single message. And isn't that the, the thrill of mass evangelism? One message can win thousands for Jesus. 
and that is what we live for. So this is now what I eat, breathe, dream, sleep and talk. I have no hobbies. We plan crusades. That is what we do. We want to see Africa saved. Our focus is Africa. Africa is our heartbeat. I am a South African born and bred. And I want to see my continent safe and sound in the embrace of our Savior King. I say amen to that. We are actually in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia right now, sitting at the Five Loaves restaurant. We've had a wonderful time fellowshipping together and talking about evangelism. And you've been doing many crusades here in Ethiopia. And you were doing a crusade here this week. And I also have the opportunity to come and, and do a, a different crusade in a different city. Tell me some of what God has been doing here in Ethiopia through your ministry. Gosh, Daniel, this is such a, a special nation. You know, the population of 110 million people. Um, that's a lot of people to get through. A lot of there's room for lots of evangelists. Evangelists, come hear me now. Come to Ethiopia. The harvest is ripe. The people are hungry. They are desperate. Um, there are many different religions in this nation. Um, and we need to lift on high the name of Jesus. It is only He who can save. He is the only path to our Father. And when the people here hear that message, they grab hold of it with everything that is in them. The response to the gospel here is absolutely fantastic. When you preach, the people are so quiet, you, you can hear a pin drop as the same goes. They listen and they grab hold of Jesus. We pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are seeing thousands upon thousands becoming filled with the Spirit of the Most High God. Miracles popping up like popcorn. You know, here in Ethiopia, they always eat popcorn with their coffee. They know popcorn. The, the, the miracles, gosh, one cannot stop them here. You, know, you, you pray in the name of Jesus, even before you pray for the sick, the miracles are manifesting. Blind seeing, deaf hearing, the lame walking. Just an, an avalanche of salvation and healing and deliverance, just manifesting it at every crusade. And here there are so many, so many remote locations. You know, the population is spread out, so many towns to hit. And we need a lot of evangelists to hit all of these towns. You know, I, I often say to my husband when we drive into a crusade location, and you know, you know Daniel what the roads are like here. It can take hours and hours and hours to reach your crusade location and you drive past village after village, town after town, and I often say to my husband, who's going there? Who's going there? You know, because one ministry, a handful of ministries cannot impact every town. We need a, an army, you know, so we need an army of crusade evangelists here to, to raise the battle cry, to win the lost. We need evangelists here to equip the saints for soul winning, teach the believers here how to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And it really does seem to be a need here. The saints don't know how to witness. So we always make sure in our crusade preparation we teach the saints how to witness the congregation members, the believers. We teach them how to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism. We need people who can teach those things. So this is, yes, only one nation in Africa, but it is the second most populated nation in Africa, second only to Nigeria. So winning Ethiopia for Jesus, it is winning a good chunk of Africa. So we need to get to work. There is a lot to do here in Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is found all throughout the Bible. It says in Psalms that Ethiopia shall quickly stretch out her hands to God. And that is true. The people here are ready to stretch out their hand when the salvation call is given. One of the very unique things about your ministry is that you are a woman. And it's amazing that when a woman preaches the gospel, it works exactly the same as when a man preaches the gospel. And I believe that God wants to raise up many more female evangelists that are bold and ready to go out and preach the gospel. And what would you say to women who maybe feel a calling to evangelism? Go for it. There's, there's no other advice I can give. Step out. Start. You know, I started, you know, as I've just shared, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and then small gatherings. 
you know, 10 people, you know, 50 people in a thousand seater tent, you know, that would crush the heart of any evangelist. Um, but I got going. You have to start. If you start, if you step out, if you speak to people about Jesus, and we must not use the excuse of being an introvert. You know, I am an introvert by nature. Um, I am not an extrovert. Um, That's very interesting. I'm an introvert too. And like, uh, Daniel Colinda is also an introvert, so so God can use people of every different type. And I think he almost does it on purpose, um, because us introverts, we need to rely on him even more when speaking to people. And we really have to be reliant on the Holy Spirit, you know, just for the courage, you know, to open up our mouths and speak, you know, let alone the words that are meant to come out of our mouths. Um, so we have to step out, we have to share about Jesus, we have to lay hands on the sick, we have to pray for the sick. You have to start. Ladies, if you feel called, called to ministry, we are all called to win the loss. So I'm speaking to ladies who are called to ministry, specifically those who are called to evangelism, even crusade evangelism. Start. If you're not doing one-on-one -on -one evangelism yet, you start with that. You get out on the streets, you go into the highways and the byways, and you start. After that, have your first crusade. Approach a local church. If they won't let you hold a crusade in their venue, ask to hold a crusade with a youth group. Pastors are amazingly liberal with their youth. They'll let pretty much anyone speak to their youth, even a woman. So ask to hold a crusade with their youth on youth night. Print a bunch of flyers. Get the kids to hand it out to their friends at school. Just start. You have to start. And if you start, I promise you, the Lord will build a team around you. He will give you wings to fly. When I started, I had no team. I was a one-woman show. I was pitching the tent, I was unpacking the chairs, I was organizing the ashes, I was preaching the gospel, I was doing everything. Was it fun? No. The joy came when I got that microphone and I could preach Jesus. And when I could lay hands on the sick, that's when the joy came. But around that joy was a lot of pain and suffering. But I pushed, I worked. The Lord saw it and He started to build a team around me. Now we are registered as a ministry in South Africa, Ethiopia, the United Kingdom, the United States. On crusade, I am with a bunch of men, my team, men. And we work together. We work together. The Lord has built a team around me, men and women, very capable, called in their own right to do different things, things that I cannot do. But if I had not started with the one-on-one, -on -one, if I had not started my own little crusade with one pastor who wanted to work with me, then two pastors, then three pastors. It's tough being a crusade evangelist when you start off, and it's even tough being a woman because pastors look you up and down and they, they, they don't see much. But if you can persist, I promise you, the Lord will raise you up. His hand will lift you up. No man will have to lift you up. God will raise you up. And the world will see that you are called and anointed and appointed. But don't give up. The devil will make you want to give up a million times every day. It doesn't make sense. They're not even a million seconds in every day. But I know what it feels like to want to give up a million times every day. But I'm so glad that I did it. And now giving up isn't even an option. So ladies and men, men, I'm speaking to you as well because the gift of evangelism is for men and women. The Holy Spirit is the same, the gospel is the same, the power is the same in any mouth. Be as male or female, young or old, we have to rise up, we have to stop playing church. We have to stop playing this weak, watered down, western Christianity that runs from suffering and wants to be hip and cool and have a following on social media. God forgive us. May we crave to suffer for Him, to bleed for Him, to sweat for Him, one day to die for Him. Let us be the Christians who Jesus died to form. He died to form Christians who are Christ-like, who want to lift His name on high. No other name no other name should be elevated but his name and i'm very glad that he made me a woman because men do underestimate me but i like it because when they underestimate me they see jesus and they look at me and they say okay 
This must be God. This must be God. And God gets all the glory, which is the way it should be. I have no muscles to show off. I have no swagger. I have no stride. I have you just Jesus. have Jesus. I have Jesus. And He is more than enough. That's awesome. I love your passion for Jesus. I love your passion for evangelism. It's so wonderful. If someone wants to find out more information about your ministry, what's your website? In his name dot global. In his name dot global. So they're welcome to connect with us there. They're also welcome to connect with us on social media. Um, it is a wonderful platform we used in the right way. Tamarin Clintworth. I told my husband when I married him, I said I'm keeping my maiden name because it is unique and people will be able to find the ministry on social media. So Tamarin Clifford, there's only one of me on social media, which is a blessing. Um, and I post on social media all about our crusades, what's happening, what the Lord's doing, where we're going next. You can pray for us, you can stand with us, but we are going full steam ahead, winning Africa for Jesus. Um, yes, so we would love we would love for you to share in the joy that fills our hearts when we see the lost come into his arms. Well, I'd encourage you to go and follow Miss Tamarin and see all the pictures of the crowds, the miracles. They're, they're always wonderful. I always read your emails and pray for you. And it, it's always wonderful to see what God is doing through your ministry. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute blessing to chat with you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.